Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time for a technical update focusing on indices and then commodities, including gold, iron ore, US oil, maybe uranium, uh, lithium, maybe. And then we'll also have a look at Bitcoin, which is absolutely a brilliant looking chart. Got a cobweb on me for some reason. And then we'll finish up with the bonds. And bonds have been a little bit bullish over the past few weeks because the hope of significant amount of decreases in interest rates uh, has probably decreased a fair bit because inflation came in a little bit hotter than expected a few days ago. And on that particular day, we did see a bit of weakness in the market, but that weakness didn't last very long. In fact, the XJO and the NASDAQ Dow Jones are all higher than that day, which I think it was Wednesday or Tuesday overnight and into Wednesday. And if we look at the weekly XJO, a really interesting one week. So we could see a fairly large shadow below the main body, which tells us the XJO during the week was much lower than where it finished. In fact, uh, the XJO opened at 7,644, went to a high of 7,681. I'm not sure when that was reached, but the low in the week was 7,489, significantly lower than it is now. So about 200 points lower and it closed at 7,658. So hopefully you do not sell out of all your shares on the Wednesday, because if we look at the daily chart on the XGO, that was the weekday. Uh, the XGO was only down 0.7% on that day, but at one point it was down about 1.5 to 1.7% because of those higher than expected uh, CPI numbers in America. And then the following two days on the Thursday and Friday, the XGO went higher, went up 0.8% on Thursday, and then 0.7% on Friday. And the SGO now is above the all-important resistance level at about 7,600. So uh, 7,658.3, not quite an all-time high just yet. It's got to have to get above about 7,700. And that level was reached a few weeks ago. But looking pretty good at the moment, the SGO. And it would definitely, without doubt, it is going to breach the all-time highs eventually. It could be next week, next month, six months from now, one year from now. Don't know, but eventually the XGO will get above 7,700. So no complaints about what's happening with the XGO at all. Now, you could complain about the XSO, but the really good thing is there was a really important level at about 2,925, 2, and the XSO has remained above that level over the past three weeks. And every time it's gone below that level, we have seen some buying in the small cap space. That's happened twice. Small sample size, but it's happened twice. So uh, much less bullish than the XGO and way significantly less bullish than the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones, but it is moving in the right direction, which is good news for those small cap investors who have been hit hard over the past few years. Now on to a few American indices, starting with the NASDAQ. And this just looks continues to look brilliant. Now, on occasion, you will see a down day. In fact, on the last trading day of the week, so the Australian market was up. The Nasdaq was down almost 1%, 0.9%, but it's a small blip, just a small blip in the overall scheme of things. A beautiful uptrend in the Nasdaq. Now, you could say, you could say this is being led by those magnificent seven, the new saying they have for those big tech companies on the Nasdaq. And maybe some of that is true, but I'm not complaining because I own most of those magnificent seven companies anyway. So brilliant looking chart. And the only argument against that, that the magnificent seven is doing all the lifting, is if you look at the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones chart looks also pretty good right now. Beautiful uptrend. So obviously the Dow Jones, the industrial average, which is, is it 25 or 30? I forget right now. 25 or 30 companies, not a lot of companies. Obviously those 25 or 30 companies are doing quite well right now. Not so true when you're talking about the Russell 2000, which is a small cap proxy index. So it's sort of a US small cap 2000. That's what they got on the training view. So the smallest 2000 companies in the Russell 3000. This is fairly similar to either the XSO or the XJO. Uh, so really going sideways since about the middle of 2022. And on two occasions recently, it looks like it was going to break out above the top of the trading range. And right now it is above the top of the trading range. So possible breakout with the Russell 2000, but I'd like to wait a little bit longer because this trading range has been in place for a while. 
And if it can get above about 2,100, that would be really good news for the Russell 2000. I don't think I have any companies within this index. And that's it for the indices. Now on to commodities, starting with gold. In fact, I'm going to show you the gold. And then if I remember, and my memory sometimes can be a little bit wonky at times. So even though I'm telling you, my intentions is to show you the gold chart and then the Bitcoin chart doesn't mean that's going to happen. I can I could forget that almost immediately. Anyway, onto the gold chart, which is, to be honest with you, a little bit disappointing. I am bullish on gold, particularly if interest rates start falling. I am bullish on gold, and I am pretty confident that eventually gold will break out, but I don't know when. And one of my biggest, I won't say problems, maybe flaws. Yeah, one of my biggest flaws is sometimes I'm a little bit too early to the party, not the literal party, but when there is a theme, I am a little bit too early. And this has happened quite a few times. It happened twice with lithium. It happened with uranium. I was really bullish on uranium well before it started taking off. And maybe I'm a little bit early to the gold party, but I do expect a nice run, a bull run in gold eventually, but it has to get above 2060. That's the important level for gold. Whenever gold gets to 2060, it struggles. It's happened about five or six times in the past few years. Let's count how many times it's happened. Just by looking at the weekly chart. So it happened one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Now, the last six times were all clustered together. The, th the other three times it's happened, in fact, you could say maybe close to three times, there was a little bit of cluster back in April, 2023. The other two times, as soon as gold get to, got to 2060, it pulled back fairly significantly. And it's not doing that right now, which fills me with a little bit of promise that eventually gold will break out. And if you do have a look at the weekly chart, this is just a pause in the longer term trend in gold. So we could say this is like a three year pause or maybe even a four year pause and gold's going sideways. But usually when something goes sideways for a long period of time, taking the breather, eventually it will break out. Have a look at the Microsoft chart. Microsoft went on a breather for about 10 years and then it broke out. Anyway, so bullish eventually on gold, particularly when it breaks out. And when it does break out and I'm confident on the breakout, I might put money into some gold companies. I have a few gold companies right now, but I might put more money into gold. Now onto iron ore. Uh, this is the weekly chart. Let's have a look at the daily chart for iron ore. It was a, was struggling. So iron ore, got, iron ore went to a high of 144 back in early January and went back down to 126. But nice little bull run. No, maybe I shouldn't say the bull run, but nice little bounce in iron ore in the past two weeks. So it's gone from 126 to 130, so not much of a bounce. But uh, possibly this could be just a dead cap bounce because I would say the trend, the short-term trend is down for iron ore. And I want to see what happens in the next few days with iron ore because it's moved to the shorter-term moving average. And sometimes the shorter-term moving average, which is this colored in or the shaded in uh, area, a lot of times the shorter-term um, moving average area can be uh, either a support or resistance zone. So I'm going to say, I'd like to see what happens with uh, iron ore over the next few days because it's moving straight into that uh, resistance zone. Uranium, uh, if you, look, you have to look at the weekly chart in trading view, it's going sideways. Uh, a fair bit, bit of volatility the last few weeks and a lot of volatility in the iron or the uranium prices is because of companies announcing uh, either they're going to wind down production of uranium or increase production of uranium. I think I've heard at least one or two of those announcements over the past few weeks. And that's why we have seen a bit of fair bit of volatility in uranium prices. The other thing or the other reason we've seen a fair bit of volatility is just because uh, uranium prices went on a massive bull run from August through to uh, January, February. Uh, they went or increased in price from about fifty-seven fifty to above one hundred dollars. And whenever you see that sort of increase in price of no matter what you're talking about, commodity, a currency, a individual company, you will see a little bit of weakness in the price, and it's very healthy to see that weakness. Now, typically, when you do see that weakness, you see a little bit of pullback, like we did see in uranium back in April two thousand twenty-three. You see a nice little bull run, and then a bit of weakness. Back. We haven't seen that with uranium prices just yet, which tells me there is still strength in the uranium sector. 
Um, so I don't own any uranium companies right now. I was a little bit too early and I sold and took profits. I should have kept on holding those uranium companies, uh, including Boss Energy, which I'm kicking myself for. Well, not really. I don't really kick myself when I make a decision like that. It's just about learning. Uh, sometimes you can be a little bit more patient when you are a little bit early to the party. That's the thing I have to learn a little bit more in the future. And let's have a look at oil. Do I own any oil companies? I think I own one, which is a small producing company. Uh, what's it called? Brookside Energy. Uh, so not bullish or bearish on oil right now. I was a little bit excited when oil got down to $68 back in the middle of December. And I was I did take a position in crew and energy at that point in time. And I've sold out of that position right now. Uh, no, yeah, no real trend in oil right now there was a bit of a downtrend uh, if oil got above about $80 that could be a sign that oil has moved back into at least a short term uptrend at this point in time no conviction at all with oil lithium can I noticed that a lot of lithium companies went on a bit of a run uh, the last train day of the week I saw some company share price were up 20% was a little bit of froth in the lithium space were some investors thinking this is the being the bottom? Well, if we look at a chart of lithium, there's no green. In fact, every single week for the past seems like for the past year has been red, which means every single week lithium prices have gone down. Now this is a weekly chart, so maybe there was some increase in price in the past um, few days, and this is also via trading view. Haven't found a lithium chart I like in trading view, so I should find a better lithium chart, maybe uh, advanced economics, something like that has better charts. Now to copper. I did see something interesting in copper. So I do own one copper company and copper has had a really nice bounce the last two days up. What was it? Up 1.6% on Thursday, up another 2% on Friday. Uh, even though we've seen a nice bounce in copper, my loan copper play share price went down, even though it's gone into production. Hillgrove Resources has just gone into production and the share price of that company has weakened just because there's a little, little bit of weakness in copper prices since the end of December. Uh, and really, when you look, look at this particular chart for copper, no direction at all, no uptrend, no downtrend. And one of the reasons I bought Hillgrove Resources, I do think it's undervalued. Uh, that's regardless or irregardless. Yeah, regardless of what happens with copper prices. But but if we do see some strength in the economies around the world in the next few months, next six months or so, there is a chance copper could go on a really good run. I don't care about electrification and how much copper we need for that. We just know that there is more demand for copper when economies around the world are healthy, not struggling like they are right now, if they are right now. Uh, coal, I won't look at coal. So... Did I show you Bitcoin? So I told you, I was going, after looking at gold, I was going to show you Bitcoin. And I forgot, I tell you, I forget. I have a really bad memory. Okay, so this is Bitcoin. Probably my favorite chart right now. I do have a little bit of money in Bitcoin. Funny enough, when I do um, go through my asset valuation, so on occasion, I value all my assets. Uh, and we are talking about some pretty high assets right now. I always forget to add my Bitcoin assets and they're a fair bit right now. I'm really thankful I bought some Bitcoin, just a trading position. When did I buy? When did I buy? I bought somewhere here. Bitcoin had just moved into an uptrend. Somewhere here was in downtrend, moved into an uptrend. And I'm happy I bought some Bitcoin because uh, it's about doubled in price since then. A beautiful looking chart. Um, there was a little bit of weakness back in January. You can see it, Bitcoin. I still remember people going, oh my God, Bitcoin has fallen off a cliff. It fell from 47,000 to below 40,000. So I suppose that's a 20% drop in price in a fairly short period of time. But it's gone from 40,000 up to 52,000. So that's a nice uh, little bounce. And the last time Bitcoin was this high was way back in end of 2022. No, the end of 2021. And in fact, it's moving towards an all-time high. So a beautiful uptrend developing, not developing, it is, it is a beautiful uptrend when you look at the Bitcoin chart. And bonds, I'm only going to, going to look at one bonds, the US 30-year bonds, because to be honest with you, all the bond charts look fairly similar. And if you look at the TLT, which is the 
bond ETF, it's the inverse of the bond charts because prices and yields of bonds are inversely related. As bond yields go up, bond prices should go down and vice versa. Wait there, said that wrong. Yeah. Did I say that right? Did I say that wrong? When bond yields go up, look at that. You can see it's inversely related. Yeah. Yeah, um, my mind is fried right now. I'm still thinking about Bitcoin, how I completely forgot to look at Bitcoin. Anyway, so uh, what was I going to talk about? Bonds. So we saw bonds for a fair bit from October all the way through to the start of uh, 2024 because a lot of people were thinking, a lot of experts were thinking uh, the Fed was going to drop uh, interest rates about 500 times in 2024. So everyone was getting really excited. And I think that excitement is now starting to wane. That's why bond yields are starting to go up. So bond yields are starting to go up. So TLT should be going down. Yep, there it is, inversely related. Bond yields going up, TLT is going down. Um, I could see myself buying TLT eventually when I do have confidence that bond yields will be going down, not permanently, but um, over a longer period of time. Okay, so that's all I've got in regards to indices, commodities, uh, bonds, and sorry, Bitcoin, I completely forgot about you. Now into individual companies' charts on the ASX, starting with Tyro Payments. So the main reason I'm showing you this is there is a potential breakout with Tyro Payments. It's not my favorite sort of breakout because the share price is not at a six-month high or at least a six-month high, but the share price has gone above the previous high the company saw in December, and it is developing into a short-term or possible short-term uptrend. So I put this onto my watch list. Just want to see how the share price moves from here, how the market reacts. Not big volume coming through. Probably also would prefer some bigger volume coming through with Tyro payments, but looking a little bit better with this company. But again, I would prefer the share price right now to be at least a six-month high. If it was at least a six-month high, preferably a one-year high, I would be getting a little bit excited about Tyro payments. And the reason why I'm searching for at least a six-month high is simply because of the mentality of many investors, not only on the ASX, but around the world. Because many investors in September, October, August, bought at higher prices. So some of them bought at $1.40. They've been underwater since then. They consider this company to be a dog stock, and they're waiting for the share price to go on a run so they can sell not at a loss. They can sell at the same price they bought. And sometimes they might have to wait a few years maybe five years before they can sell. That is the mentality of many investors. Uh, they expect the share price of a company they buy to immediately go up. And if it doesn't go up, it's it's classified as a dog stock. And then they wait for the share price to recover. And then they sell. That's the definition of resistance. And that's why I wait. Uh, I, I prefer at least a six-month high, preferably one year high, because sometimes those investors who are waiting for the share price to bounce up to the level they buy get bored. And they do take a loss. And if that happens more and more over, a, say, a year time frame or maybe a two-year time frame, you get less and less resistance. Uh, so a lot of technical analysis is all about psychology of individual investors. And when you group individual investors together, it's the collective, not uh, Star Trek to collective. That would be a completely different thing. Brain chip. I did notice someone uh, put a uh, asked me in the comment section of one of my videos my thoughts on brain chip. No announcements from the company. In fact, the company did receive a price and volume query. I don't get excited about these sort of setups. Uh, so even though the share price is going on a run for some reason, I don't know why, and there is increased volume, it's not on a positive financial announcement. This is just a day trading uh, hype. Uh, excitement, that sort of thing, this increase in volatility. Day traders love volatility. We could see the share price of this company drop 20 to 30% in one day over the next few days. We sort of saw this same sort of thing not long ago. Uh, in fact, we've said it a couple of times in the past. Share price has gone to run and then the share price completely pulls back. Uh, but this is intriguing what it's done. For some reason, no announcements from the companies. Share price increased 26.3% on Friday. 
and I think this is just day traders. Most of this excitement is just day traders. And when day traders get bored, when they lock in their profits, you could see the share price of this company fall away. So why I'm looking for the share price to pop up on solid or really good financial news is you de-risk the potential of a significant drop in the share price or you because uh, day traders are in there uh, sort of using this as a plaything. So the reason, again, I look for a pop-up in the share price on positive financial news is simply about de-risking the trade, looking for a high chance of a successful trade. In my opinion, the success possibilities of this trade, if you did buy in right now at 36 cents, I think the possibilities or the probability of a successful trade is quite low just because of day traders. And I don't understand the mentality of day traders. I just don't understand them. Okay, data three. Uh, this is interesting. So if we go back to August of last year, the share price of data three, uh, when they released their results, fell 18.8%. And I remember at the time thinking, oh, I think this is an overreaction for the market. And it seems like the market agree with me uh, after that day because the share price rallied significantly. The low on that particular day was six dollars and five cents. The share price from that day to the recent high went from six dollars to ten dollars. So we're talking about a, a more than fifty percent increase in share price over a six-month period. Then the company released their results in February, and we saw a similar reaction from the market on the day of release. But really interesting uh, reaction because the share price didn't open up significantly down. Share price fell through the day. And the share price actually, say the previous day, the share price closed at 978. The day this company released their results, the share price opened at 978. So exactly the same price. Maybe they released their results after trading began. That's a possibility. Um, and then the share price fell during that day. In fact, the share price fell 13.1%. But I just remembered what happened back in August last year. Share price then recovered. So I was keeping a close eye on data three, how the market reacted on the Friday. And for, for some reason, the market still hated this company. Share price dropped another 9.5% on pretty big volume. So really big volume coming through. And the share price is now down to $7.69. So share price has fallen from $10 to $7.60. So almost 25% drop in share price in two trading days. In fact, that's more than, is that more than a, let's have a look. In the past week, Data3 share price has dropped 22%. Why am I, why am I um, not believing? Dropped 13% and then dropped another 9%. So we're talking about 25% drop in share price over a two-day period. Uh, is the market overreacting based off what's happened in the last two days? I don't know. This is an interesting one. I was thinking maybe there was going to be a bounce after Thursday's trading, that bounce never happened. So I'm going to keep this on my watch list because share price had developed in a beautiful run. The company did release a couple of really good announcements and the market loved it, but they didn't love the results. Maybe there was some uh, forward-looking statements from management that the market didn't like. I haven't looked at Data3 results just yet. So a lot of times when a company releases their results, I take a while to look at them. I want to filter out any of the noise and, or possible noise, and this could be possible noise for Data3, although it's not looking like it. The market, market does not like something about Data3's results or their outlook statements or something in there. Credit clear. Okay. This is starting to look interesting for credit clear. Small company, although the market is 83.5, so this is the sort of company I would be interested in. Is this company profitable? I think it's either profitable or operating cash flow, free cash flow positive, or very close to that inflection point. And when we look at the longer term chart, what you see when you just look at volume is really interesting. So when the share price of this company was in this downtrend back in 2022, started 2023, not a lot of volume, fairly low volume. And then we started to see a volume pick up in May, June of 2023, very close to when the share price reaches bottom. And as the share price moved into a consolidation phase or going sideways, we saw increased pretty good volume flowing through. That's a good sign that the market thinks the bottom might be in for this company and there might be some value. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, I don't know why, because I haven't looked at any announcements. I didn't see any, any announcement from this company. 
on 16th of February, the last trading day of the week, the share price of Credit Clear rose 17.5%. Okay, volume, not massive volume, but okay, volume. Now, what was really interesting is the share price closed at 23.5 cents. And that was a really interesting level because the highs we saw back in June 2023 were 23.5 cents. And during trading, the share price of Credit Clear went to a high of 26.5 cents. So there was a little bit of selling coming through the day, and more than likely that selling was. Some people who bought in higher prices in the past saw the opportunity to sell out at higher prices. And there was a little bit more supply of shares on the market than demand. And that's why the share price fell back to 23.5 cents, which is at that level of that hot high back in June 2023. So we are at uh, sort of a, a resistance level for credit clear, but an interesting trading on the Friday for this company. So really interesting to see how shares trade over the next few days for credit clear. Definitely a company to put on your watch list. Definitely a company to follow when they release any financial results because if this company can show really good growth, sustained growth and become profitable and generate cash in their operations and free cash flow, interesting company moving forward. Credit Clear. I've never owned Credit Clear. I'm not a shareholder right now. Another company I've never been a shareholder of, not even sure what they do, Singular Health Group. I'm pretty sure I may have shown a chart for this company in the past, but we have seen the share price really take off on massive volume. And when I say just look at the volume, volume I think is underappreciated, it's probably the best word. I appreciate volume pretty well because volume can tell you a lot. So this is Singular Health. And look at the volume before 11th of January, 2024. Not a lot of volume, not a lot of interest in this market. And when there's a not a lot of interest in a company, you tend to see the share price just struggle, just gradually go down and down because you need that demand. And more than likely, shareholders are going to see the share price keep on going down. They get frustrated. Uh, they get maybe a little bit of fear bit of fear uh, interferes with the decision making. And maybe that's the wrong way to put it, but they see the share price in a downtrend. Uh, they become nervous about the company and then they sell. And because there's not enough demand to meet the selling, uh, the share price just drifts lower. So that's what happens when there's no demand, very low volume. But look what happened when the market becomes interested in the company. So you have increase in demand and that increase in demand drives the share price higher. More than likely, you're not going to see a significant increase in supply of shares on the market. But you will start to see, as the share price rises, increase of supply. People either take profits for those who bought in, and the share price was going sideways for about four or five months, or you see those shareholders who bought at high prices in the past are now willing to sell either at a small loss or to break even. So you do see an increase in supply of shares on the market. As the share price goes higher, but you have seen an increase in demand. And the reason I know there's an increase in demand is because volume has increased on the 1st of February, pushing the share price higher. On that particular day, share price rose 60%. Now, after that particular day, share price has gone sideways. We haven't seen massive volume come in. That's a good, another good sign that we have, we have seen um, any increase in supply of shares in the market is being met by demand. Share price going sideways, no big selling coming in. So I have planned, I do have Singular Health on my to-do list. I have no idea what this company does, but just by looking at the chart and the volume, some interesting things are happening around this company that I have to delve into. Uh, Judo Capital. So a company I did take a training position a few weeks ago, uh, and this was based off something. Was it a training? I think it was a trading update from the company. A really nice bounce in the share price. And after seeing the share price sort of go sideways or a little bit higher in the following trading days, that was a good sign moving forward that the market liked the announcement and there was no, no one coming in selling. And the share price has gone higher since then. Now, this was not quite, uh, did not quite fit into my rules. So I want at least a six month high. This was just under a six month high. But right now, on the 16th of February, the share price at $1.22, nice uplift in share price, about 3.5% increase. The last time the share price was this high was back on the 24th of August. So we're very close to a six month high with this company. And on that particular date, 
the 24th of August, share price of this company fell almost 20%. So some bad news on the day. So you can just see how sentiment and news flow can shift from negative and bad to positive and good. Six months is all it can take. Even three months I've seen before when the news cycle turns from bad to good or good to bad. So you always have to follow the fortunes of a company. Now, I would prefer this company share price to be at least a six month high, but I decided to take a position in this company. Uh, and I think one of the reasons I think there is some arguments that this company is undervalued at current prices. AccuCensus, um, yeah. This is sort of the chart I'm looking for, for recent IPOs. And when I say recent IPOs, I'm talking about over the last two to three years. So AccuCensus listed on the ASX a few years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. And the share price didn't do much for about six months. And one of the rules I do have is don't buy an IPO until they've been, have spent at least six months on the ASX or they have released a profit upgrade. So AccuCensus has been in the ASX for six months, at least six months, and the share price is in an uptrend. So I've used these rules to buy a few companies in the past. And one of the most, my, most, Successful trades in the past few years has been IPG Group. That company I bought after they IPO'd, IPG. So this company IPO'd and the share price immediately moved into an uptrend. So I waited six months and I bought of this little dip here. So that was, they IPO'd 17th of December and I bought in June, 2022. I bought in around about $1.50. Share price of this company is $5.19. And the share price keeps on going up. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm showing you IPG Group later in the video. So let's wait until I show you this company. And there's a reason I'm showing you IPG Group. I completely forgot. Anyway, so this is the sort of chart I'm looking for for recent IPOs, companies that have IPO'd in the past three years. Share price in an uptrend. And more than likely, the market is confident that this company is going to hit it out the park when it comes to the financials. And the share price has taken off in the last few weeks. And not only that, the volume has increased as well. That's a good sign moving forward. So I just wish I was following this company a little bit more closely because the time to buy, if I put a line right there, was on the 9th of February when the share price broke out. I probably would have bought about 94 cents probably the next day. Um, so it's increased 10% from there. Pretty good volume coming in. So definitely another company to put on your watch list. I'm pretty sure this is the company that makes the... Um, the driving stuff, the the cameras to see if you're on your phone, that sort of thing, or you're uh, driving while on the phone or driving with your mate, I don't know, all those sort of things that are frowned upon these sort of days. And rightfully so, uh, people should not be on the phones when they're driving. And I'm pretty sure the company has re released a couple of really good announcements, in particular, how they're doing in the United States. I just remember one announcement how some of their systems are put into the state of Washington or something like that. I think maybe that's one of the reasons why the share price of this company is going on run. Market cap, 133 million. So not that high. Uh, look at the volume, not the volume, the revenue of this company the last four years. So revenue has increased from 2 million to 6.3 million to 28.7 million to 42 million. Uh, slightly profitable as well. So really good growth in revenue because the systems they have uh, uh, wanted um, among governments. Probably the only bare thing you could say about AccuCensus is in the case we all go to automated vehicles. Who knows when that's going to happen? It could be five years, 10 years, 100 years from now. But that could be the only thing holding AccuCensus back or me taking a position in AccuCensus anyway. Uh, Challenger. Okay, so Challenger released their results as well. And this is fairly similar to Judo Capital. A uh, nice little rally on the day they released the results up 8.4%. And you can see the reaction from the market the next three days. Pretty good reaction. We didn't, didn't see any major selling. But the last time the share price was this high was back in July last year. So this is a little bit better than Judo Capital because we are talking about a six-month high. So this is a potential play, potential trade with Challenger because their results did look pretty good after just a slew of of, uh, I won't say negative results, but underwhelming results. So this is a potential breakout for Challenger. Let's have a look at the weekly chart. I think this is also exciting. So the share price of Challenger has been going sideways over the past three years. 
Uh, so really not much trend in the share price, just looking at the weekly. So definitely, if the share price gets above, say, 772, which would be, which would mean at least a four-year high, I think, think there could be a trade here with Challenger. Um, so I'm thinking about this right now. This is a possible trade with me, Challenger. Do I have it on my watch lists? No, I just have it in my February 24 results watch list. I should put it into my, I have a watch list, which is called daily. Any company in my daily watch list, I look at every single day. I look at the chart every single day. I don't look at the company every single day. I just look at the chart every single day. So possible, possible trade when it comes to Challenger, just based off the results and the market reaction and where the share price might be heading. Might. What a word. Company I do own, and I'm pretty sure I have this company in my quality portfolio. Now, this is a fairly small company, market cap of only 210 million, but this company grows each and every year. Now, I didn't grow last year, if I remember correctly, but if you look at the history of this company, it just grows, consistently grows from year to year to year by the Ocean Group. Share price has been struggling in a long-term downtrend. Now, it depends what you defer or depends how you define long-term. Share price has been in downtrend since the end of 2021. So we're talking about a two and a half year or two year downtrend. So is that long-term? Yeah, I think that's long-term. And you can see every single time the share price rallies above the 150-day moving average, we see some selling coming in. Until the last time it rallies above the 150-day moving average, that was in the middle of December. It stayed above that, uh, that level. And then you can see the short-term moving average channel has turned green. Now, the last three times it's turned green, it was only green for a brief period of time. It's been green for a while now. Now, the thing we're waiting for when it comes to Vodation Group is a breakout. And what do I prefer? When a company share price is breaking out, I want to see the breakout on good financial news. And the company released their financial results and the share price broke out. What I'm looking at for a breakout in this instance, the share price gets above the highs we saw back in August of last year. And the share price has definitely done that. Share price now at $6.70, the highs we saw back in August were $6.50. And the last time the share price was this high at $6.70 was in February of last year. So we are talking about one year high for Fiducian Group. So this is an old classic uh, NEPI breakout. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I'm already holding shares in this company. So what I could do is just trade this company. I should have thought about that. Uh, the other thing to note, and I keep talking about volume, look at the volume. So just look at the volume. Um, and look at this spike in volume on the 15th of December. Now, sometimes they ignore spike in volumes because it could be just a cross trade. And you, what you really want to see is heightened volume over numerous days. We've definitely seen that over the last four days, increase in volume, particularly when you look at that bunch of increased volume days compared to what we see the rest of this chart, really low volume. And now we've seen a pickup in volume. I think you might be able to see this if you look at the weekly chart. Yeah, if you look at the weekly chart, discount that peak in volume. Uh, the weekly volume, really good. In fact, the highest weekly volume we've seen since COVID-19 financial panic. That's a good sign moving forward for Fiducial Group. This is another potential trading possibility. Yes. i always willing to trade companies I already own for the long term in my quality portfolio. Always willing to do that. So daily, 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 daily. Okay, back to IPG group. Always, no, IPD group. The ticket is IPG. Okay, now, this is a daily chart. So, we know share price in a beautiful uptrend. Now, the share price got to roughly $5, or very close to $5 in July, got to $5 in September 2023. And just look how many times the share price of this company touched that $5 and pulled back. So, we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, close to seven, we'll say six to seven times. And every single time the share price of IPD group got to $5, it pulled back. Now, one way you could play this is when you see the share price struggling to get above a resistance level, so $5 is resistance. And the reason it's resistance is because traders or even uh, longer term holders of this company See, when the share price gets to $5, it struggles. So the next time the share price gets to $5, they put their shares onto the market. So increase in supply. And if there's not enough demand to meet that supply, that's why you see the share price pull back. 
Now, the last few times when the share price got to $5, the pullback wasn't very strong. That is telling me that the sellers are becoming exhausted. Not exhausted fatigue, but there's fewer and fewer of the sellers. And then all of a sudden, I don't think the company released any news, then all of a sudden, on the 14th of February, happy Valentine's Day, share price of IPD Group increased 6% on OK volume, OK volume, and it broke out above $5. This is a breakout, not a traditional breakout, because it does not coincide with uh, positive financial news. But this is a secondary breakout that I have seen on occasion when the share price is struggling to get above a resistance level, and then all of a sudden, the share price rises above that resistance level on strength, some good volume coming through, and the share price rise on the day is about 5 or so percent. And then the share price needs to remain above $5 in the next few trading days. I'd like to see at least four or five trading days because it could be a false breakout. But the share price has remained above $5. In fact, it's at now at $5.19. So I'm calling this a breakout when it comes to IPD group. And there's another possible trade I could do for a company I already own. Now, my value of my holdings in this company, in fact, this is my largest holding right now because I haven't sold any shares in this company, haven't taken any profits just yet. So it has added up, just riding the wave, riding the wave up for IPD Group. Katmandu. Now, this is something I was thinking about trading, a bounce off a long-term support level. I have used this particular strategy successfully in the past. People in did that really well. Let's have a look at these charts I did it successfully with. People in long-term resistance level. You can see that got to one dollar. So not only was one dollar a long-term support level for people in, but it's a round number, which adds up to it being a really good support level and a really good trade. The other thing, massive volume. There are three really good reasons why this was a successful trade for me. So I bought into people in and I sold off, sold my shares in this company really quickly. Uh, so I think within a week, I sold my shares. So about a 20% gain and share price of this company is now up 36%. So maybe I took profits a little bit too soon. But the whole reason I took this trade was just a quick gain, a 20% gain in one week. I always take that. And the other company I use this trading method was Develop Global. Not quite as good as um, people in, but the share price of Develop Global fell off a cliff uh, in the first few weeks of January, say maybe the end of December, you can see the share price just collapsed uh, in increasing volume as well. And you can see on a couple of days, the 22nd of January and 23rd of January, those one day candlesticks had a pretty long tail, pretty long shadow, which tells me when the share price of this company got below about $1.90, there was a lot of buying coming in, which is a really good support level for this company. So it took a trade at about a dollar and I forget what it was, I think it was $1.97. And then the day after I took a trade in this company, the share price increased 10%. And then the next day increased another 11%. And I took profits almost straight away. 20% profit, I think it was about 22, 23% profit in two trading days. And after that, share price has gone sideways, $2.45, around the level I took profits at. I'm not complaining about this trade because it was over two days. And this was just buying near a good support level and the other thing I want to see is some really good volume coming in. Look at the volume coming in, though, around those days when the share price was uh, near those uh, that support level. So vol volume is really important when I make these sort of decisions, like with people in and develop global. Now, let's go to Kathmandu, because Kathmandu was getting to a really important support level at $0.62. Cents. That support level was set in place during the COVID-19 financial panic. Might have been set in place before that. Close back in uh, 2012, share price got near to that level when this company was named called Kathmandu and they only had the Kathmandu brand. Now, you can see the massive volume during the COVID 19 financial panic, so sort of ignore that. This is just the weekly chart, by the way. So, what I'm looking for, or what I was looking for with Kathmandu, is a potential bounce off this level, but I didn't see any volume. In fact, in fact, I zoomed in closer. When the share price got to this level, there was really low volume. We haven't seen an increase in volume until it fell below this support level. So we didn't see that massive volume coming in when the share price got to 62 cents. So because I didn't see that volume, I decided not to make this trade and uh, in the expectation of a bounce, just like people in 
and develop global and the share price has now fallen below 62 cents. In fact, it's 57 and a half cents. Now we have seen an increase in volume. So possibly we might see a bounce. Now, if we do see a bounce, I wouldn't be surprised to see the share price get back up to 62 cents and then weaken because now that level could be resistance. And then sort of what you might see is a bounce to 62 cents and then the share price fall away again, possibly below 57 cents. And I have seen KMD brands mentioned a few times in articles, um, some podcasts because of possible value plays. So if the share price keeps falling for this company, you might see some value or even deep value investors coming in think there's value. So KMD brands, market cap is 406 million, price to earnings ratio 12.9, which is not too high. Dividend yield is about 10%. This could be a dividend yield trap uh, just based on the pre-ratio. So I'd like to do a little bit more research if I was thinking about this being a potential value play, but this was only a potential trade and the trade or potential trade failed. So you have to keep an eye on volume. Volume is very important. Prometicus, whoa, hallelujah. Well, maybe the opposite of hallelujah. So I am a long-term holder of Prometicus. I was thinking of taking profits. I thought, no, no, I'm going to rue the day I take profits in this company. So share price got above $100 and went, I should take profits because the valuation of this company is absurd. But I've been thinking the valuation of this company has been absurd for years. P ratio of this company, according to TradingView, is 141. That's absurd. Now, the company released their results and the market didn't like it. So why share price fell? Now, when you look at the underlying results, they look pretty good. So everything was up about 30 to 40%, which is good. But this company is valued to perfection and possibly the results did not meet expectations, even though the revenue profit up 30 to 40%. That's why the share price has absolutely taken a dive over two consecutive days. Fairly similar to data three. Now, the share price of Prometicus is at a very important level. And that is the 150 day moving average. So if you go back through time, particularly over the last, say, two years, when the share price of Prometicus gets to 150 day moving average, that's a support level. We have seen it now one, two, three, four times in the past. So possibly we might see a bounce off these levels, but still, I think there's going to be people out there who think this is still way overvalued at even $87. And even though the share price has dropped, how much has it dropped in the past week? Even though share price has dropped, it says 20%, more than 20% in the last few trading days. Uh, this is the weekly chart. Now, if you look at the weekly chart, so this is important to look at the different time frames. Uh, the 150 week moving average is a really important level as well. So twice in the past uh, four years, uh, the share price of this company has reached 150 week moving average. First time was in March, 2020. Second time was in May, 2022. And then we see it bounce. Now, current, the 150 week moving average is at $61. Could the share price of ProMedicus get to $61? If it does, maybe an interesting buying level for those shareholders, or for those who want to take a position in ProMedicus. A few more companies to go. First one is Downer. So this is another potential trade off on the back of the company's results. Now, I looked at the results, and on the surface, they look pretty bad, but it's not on the surface that matters. It's how the, mark, how the results are compared to expectations and whether the company has put any guidance into the announcement or if they've released any guidance. Uh, and we know just by looking at this chart and the market reaction, the market liked either the results and or guidance from the company. So share price has increased significantly. Share price increased 11% on the day, increased a further 5.9% the next day on the Thursday and fell or remained steady the next day. There was a little bit of selling coming in on the Friday. And that was a breakout. This is a classic breakout because the share price on the day the company released their results broke above the highs we saw back in July of last year. So the share price right now for Downer is at a multi-year high. Last time share price was this high was December 2022. So we're talking about a 14-month so high. So this is a classic neppy breakout. Good financial results. Share price breaking out to at least a six-month high and some pretty good volume coming in. So let's have a look at the volume. So pretty good volume, not massive volume, but good volume coming in for Downer EDI. Do I have to include the EDI? I have no idea. 
So, whoa. So, this is a company I've been following for a long time. When I say long time, I mean when the share price of this company was over $2 and the market cap of this company was something low, ridiculous, like uh, $500 million. The share price moved into a long term downtrend because this company was not profitable, burning through cash. This is an internet provider or telecommunications company. Uh, and I think there is possibilities that this company could be profitable and generating cash flow soonish. Soonish. Mark up of this company currently $40 million. Now, the reason I'm a little bit excited about this company is because the share price of Swoop has struggled to go below 18 cents. And the current share price of the company is 18 and a half cents. So I'm thinking of putting a sneaking, sneaky bid at 19 cents, hoping the share price goes on a rally. Now, a few counters to that theory or that uh, potential trade is the last time we have seen the share price bounce off 18 cents twice. The first time the bounce was impressive. The share price went from 18 cents to a high of 43 cents. That's uh, more than a 100% gain in a short period of time. So that was a pretty solid bounce, but it was on low volume. The second time we saw a bounce when the share price got to 18 cents, the response from the market was less excited, less enthusiastic. Uh, share price only went from 18 cents to 27 cents, still a nice 50 cent gain in share price. But again, low volume. And we know these um, rallies in the share price, after the share price hits these 18 cents levels, we know these rallies are going to fail because low volume. The market is not excited about the bounces. You want to see really big volume coming in. And more than likely, there's no reason why there's bounces just who knows what the market does. Market can be weird sometimes. The share price right now is at 18 and a half cents. Are we going to see a bounce? Now, we did see a little bit of volume coming in a few days ago, which telling me maybe the market is thinking this is a good buying opportunity. Uh, and the company should be releasing the results soon. Now, there is a possibility the company could release results that excite the market. And that's the time to think about buying, even though we won't see a six-month high. So the way I'm thinking about playing this is put a sneaky trade in, uh, a buy bid in at 19 cents. And if if the company's results do excite the market, we could see the share price rally quite easily off these lows, maybe a 50% gain in a short period of time. And if the share price falls below 18 cents and stays below 18 cents for a while, just take your loss, a small loss, maybe a 15% loss. Uh, Goodman Group, two companies to go, Goodman Group and there's West Farmers. Uh, I have been a share of this company on and off over the years. And then I bought some shares in Goodman Group. I bought shares in Goodman Group on this breakout right here. So in August results, you can see the share price rally quite good on really good volume coming through here. I wanted to see the share price get above this level, $21. It got above $21. Fine enough, the share price pulled back to $21 in October. Uh, the rally after it touched off uh, $21 was fairly weak. And then the share price fell below $21. And I went, oh, dear me. But it was only below $21 for a short period of time. And the share price of this company has been in a beautiful trend. So you could say this was a false breakdown below $21. So not big volume coming in. That was the one thing that saved me from selling at a loss for this company. So initially, this was a trade. And then... I did a little bit more research in Goodman Group, particularly around their data center property potential. And I think the blue sky is there for this company. Now, I just get a little bit upset when Goodman Group is lumped in with all the other REITs. I don't and not excited about REITs. This is not a REIT. Now, they do have a REIT part of the business, but this is not a pure play REIT. In fact, someone, a few, this was maybe six months to a year ago, uh, looked at this company's net tangible assets thought this company was a riot and went, why is this company trading at a significant premium to their NTA? This is ridiculous. This is a sell, 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 sell. You can't have that view of this company being a riot because you are going to wonder why this company is, is trading at a significant premium to their NTA when all the other riots are trading at a significant discount to the NTA. This is an asset manager also. So, and the reason why the markets got excited, I heard this in the grapevine was because of increased potential around data centers, that sort of thing. That's why the market is getting excited. Market loves data centers for some reason. Loves data centers. Uh, beautiful chart too, really.
And finally, West Farmers. Now, I've always thought, particularly over the last few years, uh, West Farmers has been overvalued, significantly overvalued, but you can't deny the chart. And the share price of West Farmers moved into an uptrend. Okay, I'm going to do it right now, right here. I was thinking of taking a position in West Farmers at around about $55 when the share price broke above these two, sort of a double top, not a true double top because double top tends to be a reversing pattern. Um, and share price got above those two highs uh, on the middle of December, about $55. And I thought, oh, but I was thinking, oh man, but this company is just overvalued. I'm not going to do it. How much could the share price run? And the share price has run from $55 to $62.95. So overall, not a massive run the share price, but that's a 15%, 16% run the share price over a short period of time. And then the company did release the results and the market loved it. Share price rallied 5% on the day and the next day another 1.7%. So this on pretty good volume as well. So this is a continuation of the uptrend. I wouldn't necessarily call this a breakout. The true breakout happened in December. Uh, didn't coincide with positive financial news, but it seems like the market was expecting really good results in February and the market received those results. Those who were a little bit more dubious about the results, um, that's why the share price rallied because there were some participants in the market who were not as excited as the market around the results. So pretty good looking chart for West Farmers and congratulations to those shouters who thought there was some value in this company. Unlike me who thought this company's, this company's valuation was a little bit too toppish. Uh, maybe not think that right now. I'll wait until I see their results. Maybe the results were really good. In fact, the other thing they said, they might not have said this in, this in their um, presentation, but this company is not making any money out of the lithium mine at current lithium prices. That's the other thing to take into account. Uh, this company has a lithium mine, a pretty big lithium mine. I was a shareholder of this lithium mine, Kidman Resources, many, many years ago, and then they bought West Farmers bought this uh, lithium mine and I was so devastated about that. Anyway, um, yeah, this is a lump. So that's when I was a little bit ahead of the curve when it comes to being a little bit too early with a, a bull run uh, in lithium, which happened many, many years ago. Anyway, that's all I have for this particular video, this technical update. If you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the, in the uh, comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for the video. Have a good day. Bye.